And we are back. Advocates for Children of New York have voiced strong support for the State Education Department's recent proposal to overhaul graduation measures. Citing concerns over equity and effectiveness, they applaud the move away from high-stakes exit exams towards a more inclusive framework that accommodates diverse learning needs. Joining me now, the Assistant Director at Post-Secondary Readiness Project for, of Advocates for the Children of New York. We've got Juliet Eisenstein, and thank you so much, Juliet Eisenstein, for being with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So give me your perspective on this here, because when we talk about high school graduation re requirements, a lot of people have been saying it needs reformation. And here it is. Um, let's talk about it. Yeah, we're really excited about the changes that New York State Education Department has um, announced uh, that exit exams may no longer be required in order to get a diploma in New York State. We think this is a huge step in the right direction and represents a ton of progress in recognizing that there are multiple ways that learners can demonstrate their proficiency and readiness to get a high school diploma and in fact will meet the needs of a lot more learners. In the past, exit exams uh, study show are correlated to increased dropout rates amongst students, particularly um, students of uh, color and low-income students. And we also have seen that they don't correlate to increased success um, and readiness for those uh, next steps post high school, whether that be college or something else. And so we're excited to see that New York State is recognizing this and hopefully going to be opening up more opportunities uh, for students to gain more meaningful experiences in high school and, and show their readiness for life after in, in a multitude of ways. Julie, can you unpack for me a little bit about this? When we talk about uh, the exit exam itself, it becomes very cumbersome on the, on the part of students sometimes trying to get out, that, out the door. Um, but what makes it so cumbersome for students that we see whether, you know, the people are not excelling uh, and or failing and having a whole lot of issues here that brings us to where we are today. Um, so what makes it so cumbersome for students? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think, you know, every student is different. Some things that uh, come to mind immediately are a lot of students simply have testing anxiety. Um, so they might know everything and then they get to test day and that knowledge goes out the window or they need a lot more time than they're able to get. Um, I think also testing that we've seen in these high stakes exams aren't testing for a student's understanding of, you know, the content that they really need in order to succeed after high school. It's testing for typically, you know, the memorization of really specific uh, questions and responses that might really not reflect what a student actually needs to know. And so, you know, they might not feel prepared in that way. I think also students have learning disabilities and learning differences and, you know, circling bubbles on a piece of paper uh, for them because of those disabilities or perhaps English is not their first language. Um, that just might not be the most accurate measure to capture their learning because it's so constrained to, you know, how you respond in these 60 minutes or two hours. I mean, studies have even shown that the weather on the day of testing can impact students scoring. Yeah. You know, when we talk about this in particular here, we find it, uh, you know, exit requirements right now, uh, New York ranks, or I should say, is like one of nine states that are still left when it comes to this whole exit exam thing. Everybody else has made reformation. New York is one, one of nine states left. From your perspective, what's taking so long to <laughs> get across the finish line? Like, what's, what is it? I think there are a lot of voices that are pro high stakes testing. Um, and it's a massive change. The regents um, have been around for quite some time and not that this change would actually get rid of them. It wouldn't, it would just mean they're no longer required to get a diploma. Um, but, you know, I think progress 
of this multitude, New York City is the largest school district in the country. Um, you know, it it takes a lot of conversations and advocacy and understanding of what the multitude of learners that this uh, state is serving. I want to get to another topic of conversation here, but we talk about high school GPA and then we talk about the SAT. Uh, we know standardized test scores really count. Uh, I know for myself, it was the dread of taking the SAT, having my numbers, the dread of opening the envelope up to see the numbers. And, you know, I'm one, in, I'm one of many who probably did not test as well on the SAT as I did with my regular GPA. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Sorry, I think I might have frozen there for a second. Um, the studies show that GPA is more strongly correlated with how prepared a student is going to be to be successful in high school. Again, the SAT and ACT are examples of other standardized tests that you know might capture a very specific moment in time, um, whereas your GPA is representing your cumulative experiences in high school and oftentimes is also measuring the effort you're putting into your learning and um, you know a, cons a more uh, consistent swath of your academic experience than, than one single test can ever measure. Yeah. So how are students with disabilities impacted by standardized tests? Students with disabilities, um, you know, there's a wide swath of disabilities that students may experience. And I think generally standardized testing only measures one very specific type of learning, which is how well can I perform filling in these answers in this very specific measure of time. The reality is, even if you don't have a disability, everyone learns differently. And requiring just one exit exam to see whether a student is ready to graduate really does not take that into account. It assumes that all learners learn the same exact way and can show their understanding and learning in the same exact way. And what if you're more um, equipped with your verbal comprehension than your reading comprehension? What if you do get that testing anxiety and you're gonna freeze up even if you do know the contents? Um, you know, what if you, you need a lot of uh, support to know like how to fill in the bubbles, but you understand what the gist of the question is getting at, but you, you can't represent that in, in the confined space of the answers. There's so many different ways of learning and demonstrating your learning. And the reality is just that one single test is never going to be able to accurately measure learning of all students because everyone does learn differently. Yeah. How do you answer the critics who say there should not be multiple pathways to getting a diploma? I think there's a common misconception that eliminating uh, the region's exam requirement for graduation eliminates rigor. And actually what I would say is that these multiple pathways tend to be more rigorous than the regions because the regions is just, you know, have you memorized how to answer these specific questions? Have you been, you know, trained to fill out this test appropriately? Whereas when you have multiple measures of learning, um, you're, you're kind of uh, forced to more rigorously apply the course knowledge um, that you've learned throughout the year or the semester um, into an essay or into a project and report um, that's a bit more hands-on and uh, really like in the weeds of the material and subject matter. Um, so I think oftentimes we see that the performance-based assessments and other pathways are, are more rigorous for students. Um, and on top of that, there's no correlation found between Regents exams and success post high school, particularly for students who are low performing. And so, um, you know, if the Regents exams aren't helping them increase their achievement, I think it is really important to rethink what can we do to best prepare students for life after high school. Julian Eisenstein, thank you so much for sharing with us here. She's the Assistant Director, Post-Secondary Red Readiness Project Advocates for Children of New York. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It's a great conversation, and I'm glad to know some of these progressions are being made. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All righty. Listen, now, for more information, visit the website at advocatesforchildren.org, and we encourage you also, don't go anywhere.
Got more open right after this.